We are on, we're live, we're ready to shoot the uh, Marketing Your Practice show. G'day, T. G'day, man. It's uh, good to be here and g'day to all our listeners, viewers, watchers out there. Tony and Angus from Adio Media. And if you're listening to this, then perhaps jump on over to Adio Media, find our YouTube channel, you get to see what our fancy new little studio looks like, our background. In fact, in a coming video, um, we'll show you just how easy it is to set up your own studio uh, for next to next. An afternoon, a bit of mucking around with Tony and I. Um, and in fact, right now, we're, I mean, we're shooting this literally on a $169 webcam. Yeah. So basic setups, stuff like that too. So we'll be, you'll see little updates of this in the coming weeks um, as we move forwards. So today, today we're talking um, all about content. And we're talking in particular, when we're putting content out to our audiences, uh, our content, for it to be magnetic, uh, for it to uh, attract new patients, for it to build authority, for it to build expertise, for it to even build celebrity, then it really needs to answer three questions. And we're going to go through exactly what these three questions are. But I want to take a little step back before this as well. So you might be saying to yourself, well, look, I'm not making videos. I'm not putting out a blog. If you've got a website that you're putting out there, then you're putting out content to your audience. If you're making the occasional post on Facebook, on Instagram, if your practice is doing those kind of things there too, then you're putting content out there. And if you're not doing any of those kind of things, then you need to get started. And you um, should be. Absolutely. And I don't want to overplay this too, but there's a window that's open at the moment for you to really position you and your practice as the authority. And it's going to get more and more difficult with time to do that just because of the traffic and breaking through the noise. So if there's ever been time to start with mm. regards to that too. This, um, you know, I listen to that kind of analogy in terms of the exponential growth that's happening in technology, in intelligence as well. And Evan Pagan, whose book I'm reading at the moment, he gives this example tone of if we had a lily pad that was inside a pond and that lily pad just doubled um, every day. He says, you know, after 17 days, it looks like nothing's happening. After 27 days, the lily pad is 12.5% full. But by 30 days, it's, it's there. It's like the, the whole pond is completely mm. full of lily pads. And what he's going to show is it might not look like much is happening at the moment there too, but when you start to be putting regular content out there, all of a sudden that starts to be taken up. People will start to watch that. We're playing a medium to long-term game. You know, that's, that's the game that we need to be playing with our marketing, um, with our communication strategies as well. And when the best time, you know that old saying of, you know, when's the best time to plant an oak tree? It was... 20 years ago and the second best time is today. Mm -hmm. So same is set for you for your content, sharing your helpful content out there. So what Tony and I want to dive into today is give you some of the 40,000 foot view in terms of what it is exactly we're trying to achieve with our content. And when we answer these three questions and when we do a great job of answering these three questions, um, then you can absolutely expect your content to be magnetic. You can expect the phone to ring. You can expect to build an audience as well. Um, <clears throat> but sadly, we tend to go about answering these questions backwards mm. um, and when we muck that up as well. So, um, and, and often we miss them out when I mean, we don't even answer them. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Not to, uh, number one. So step number one, um, why don't you lead the way? Yeah, well, the first one really is that in everything that you put out there in every message is, do I trust you? You know, trust is just the thing that underpins any decision that we make about buying something. Um, so everything we're putting out there, the videos, the content, the blogs, the, the websites, everything, it needs to convey a message to the person that you want to target that they can trust you. Yeah, so trust is the number one commodity of any relationship, uh, whether it be an intimate relationship with your spouse, spouse whether it be a, a parental relationship. And certainly, you know, when we're talking about marketing and you wanting to have a consistent reach out into your community, what you need to be doing is building massive amounts of trust. And anything that underpins that trust and breaks that down is going to act as a huge hurdle, if not a, a flat out barrier that's going to stop people wanting to come in and see you. So whilst it might not be, oh, yeah, OK, I guess I get I need to start to build some trust. There are certain strategies that we can go about that help us build trust. And one of the most effective ways is, this is why video is so incredibly powerful. We've all received, uh, I, I'm in the middle of mediating a, a minor battle between um, my sisters and their mother, my mother at the moment as well, built around some text messages with uh, misconstrued 
connotations to them as well. So when you might be saying, hey, listen, I, I like to just write uh, blog posts or um, you know the purely text-based stuff that I'm putting on facial on social, Facebook or social media, facial media, facial media. Yeah. I like it. So that's what it's now known as. It too. But it's easy, unless you're an incredible writer, it's really easy to mix things up. And as I was saying before, we've often got text messages where we're a bit confused about what the message is. But yet video really allows us to show personality and authenticity, unlike any other medium at the moment mm. there. And, it, and this is why it's so important that when you're making videos, whilst you, you, there's some benefit in you uh, role modeling people who uh, feel that you like, if you're trying to be like Tony, being like Tony really works for Tony. I don't try and be like Tony, even though he's a business partner for me. Tony's got his style. I've got my style. What your audience really wants to see is who are you and who? what's the authentic you? And personality and relatability is a huge, huge part of why we choose a healthcare practitioner. And that's why I want to get to know who you are moving forward. Mm. So any other thoughts that you would... I think that nails it on the head, which, which, which then, I guess it brings up that concept of, well, that will also determine what type of content you put out there. Because if you, you need to put across who you are in your style, which is going to attract a certain audience, and we'll, we'll get into um, uh, how important that is, knowing, you, knowing your audience, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, moving forwards there too. So if you're joining us now by the world of uh, uh, social media, whether it be Facebook or whatnot too, we're talking today about the three questions that all of your content should be asking, should be answering. Um, so whether that be your, uh, you know, if you're putting out a newsletter once a month and you're going old school and posting it out, which, mind you, that old school at the moment is super effective because we just don't get mail mm. nowadays. It's exciting to get an actual mail that comes to us. So whether it be your website, whether it be that you're making videos, there's three questions that we really need to be addressing. And that first question, when anybody is reading our stuff, when anybody's watching our video, when they're coming to our website is, do I trust you? Now on to the second question that we're gonna look at, and we'll do our fancy little screen changes Ooh, through here. Bottom jing. The second question that our audience is looking at is, do you understand me. So it's important in terms of, because you think about it, if you're looking for a solution, you might go through there and they tick the first box, say, yeah, I trust this person here, but they don't understand me. And this is comes under this concept that when we're looking for a solution, when we're wanting to buy a solution, we're always wanting to buy a specific solution rather than a general solution. Mm. So I'll give you the metaphor that, that we share often, and um, whilst this might be tough of you chiropractors, for tough for some of you chiropractors here because you hate talking about painkillers, but I want you to imagine that it's a Sunday afternoon and somebody that you know is lying on the couch feeling uh, sick, headaches and backaches, fevers, all those kind of things, and it gets to the stage for them that what they're going to do is they're finally going to go get some pain relief. They're going to make their way down to the local, local supermarket. I've got some word mixing up going on today. Yeah, it's all good, dude. Yeah, it's going to... No problem. What happens when I have scotch before we start this? <laughs> so they're heading down to the local supermarket and they decide they need to get some pain relief for their fevers, for their back aches, for their neck aches and for their headaches. They're walking down the aisle there. And certainly here in Australia, one of the bigger brands is called Panadol. So they see the general specific box of Panadol. They reach out to grab the box of Panadol. And just as they're doing that, they happen to see out of the corner of their eye Panadol back and neck pain. They went, hang on, hang on, that, that's me. I've got that, back and that's neck gonna pain. Be better. That's for me. And as they grab that off the shelf, something else catches their uh, eye and it's Panadol flu back and neck pain. And they read through that for high fevers, for back pain, for neck pain and headaches. Now, if you take a moment and think about it, what are your audience going to choose? Are they going to choose the general Panadol? Are they going to choose the Panadol back and neck pain? Are they going to choose Panadol flu back and neck pain? Now, my contention is, is that probably 99 times out of 100, they're always going to choose the Panadol flu back and neck pain, even though it's the same stuff inside mm -hmm. of it. Now, we're learning here from billion dollar companies who have researched and investigated, and it's under that pillar that our audience are always looking for experts and they always buy solutions that are specific to their problem. So how does this relate to this concept of do you understand me? It's all about us getting to know our audience and understanding that we need to communicate with them in a different manner depending on who they are. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, there's simple examples of uh, an elite athlete needs a different message to a new mum mm. who's uh, got a child who's not sleeping. And so we need to know, first of all, 
from who we get some great results with, who we love coming in, they're going to be the type of people that we want to have more of coming into our practice. Mm. And so that can be our target audience. And we need to know what do they like to do? Where do they hang out? What are their hopes? What are their dreams? What are they trying to get rid of? What are they trying to have more of? What are their fears? What are their frustrations? What stops them coming in to see a health practitioner? All these things we need to, to know and understand, but on a really deep level so that we can then communicate to them, allay those fears, show them that there is a way to get what they want and their desires, to reduce any of those barriers that are, might be stopping them to come and see you. We need to be communicating these in all of our communications, whether it's video, blog, uh, whatever it is, email, newsletters, uh, etc. So we need to be communicating in their language with their problems, um, not from our point of view. And so what are that, one of the things that means is that you can't be trying to communicate with everyone. Every piece of content that you're putting out there needs to be designed to be communicating to one specific group of people. So nowadays it's suggested that on a daily basis we're exposed to you know, 10,000 different messages. Each time we jump on Facebook at least, there's 1,500 different messages queued up for us. And as I'm scrolling through there, well first of all realize this, when I am scrolling through there, uh, very rarely are we getting on social media in uh, an effort to try and make a buying decision, certainly around choosing a healthcare person, a healthcare professional. So that's the first thing to really be aware of is they're not in a buying decision anyway. So we need to break through that noise by feeling like we're communicating just to that person. And so if we have made a video, for instance, that um, you know we decided, hey, listen, this today's video is going to be um, about my three favorite tips about raising a healthy drug-free family. So we're gonna think about who am I communicating with? Well, first of all, I'm probably communicating with the mother. The mother yeah. So most of our healthcare decisions for the family are still made by the mother now. So, And then what are her biggest fears, frustrations, and worries? Well, she's probably worried about the kids having days off school, you know, perhaps not sleeping through the night uh, because the kids are up through the night there too. You know, she wants her kids being able to perform at their absolute best. She doesn't want to be going back and having uh, visits to the doctor and medication over and over again. So if I know all of that, then I can start my video off that talks something about that, which could be just something as simple as, hi gang, Dr. Angus here from Life Chiropractic. Today's video, we're going to talk about my three favorite steps for raising a drug-free, healthy family. So if you're wanting to move away from, or if you feel like you're going to the doctors again and again and again, if your kids are missing school or if they're not sleeping through the night, or if you're sick and tired of just going back and forth to antibiotics again and again and again, then today's video is exactly for you. So stick around and I'll teach you more. Now, what I've done then is if I'm a mum that's looking for that, I go, yes, that, you know, that, mm. that's me. You know, Do I trust you? There's some video that get to see my personality inside of that too. Yeah, I'm sick of going back and reaching for antibiotics again and again. I know it's not good for my kids. I am frustrated. And yes, I've been up you know, half the nights over the last 30. So the idea of that introduction through there is to get me to watch a little bit more of the video for me to start to build a bit of no like and trust and then we'll talk about when we go into the third point there in a moment also so second question that we must answer with all of our content is do you understand me that's what our audience is looking at too best way for us to have our audience feel understood is to get to know them uh, really, really well. And then Tone, on to the third question. Number three, which is, can you help me? Um, and that's a question that everyone's always asking. And, and, and this, is, this tends to be the only one that really gets answered by a lot of practitioners in their communications. It's all about, you know, this can do that, this can do that, chiropractic can help with this and this and this. Um, what we really need to get down is you know, this person that we've, that we've really gotten to know, you know, they need to know that you can help them. Mm. which obviously we need to be putting out some great content to answer that question. And uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. So if you haven't, because think about it for a moment, you may well have the solution absolutely to help that family raise a drug-free family. You might have all the solutions to do that too. But if the content that you're putting out, if first of all, if it doesn't build trust, mm. if the person watching it doesn't feel like you understand them, they're never going to get to the point of you helping them. And in fact, you could uh, promise the world and be able to deliver the world there too, but they are absolutely blank to you, which is why we must address those first two questions. And then it comes into, uh, can you help me? 
And I guess when it comes into the can you help me, this is where we want to come back and we want to look at that uh, pyramid of uh, trust, mm. triangle of trust that we often talk about. And there are three levels to that of how we go about identifying that we can help them too. Do you want to talk mm. through those three levels? What's Super the base important. Of it? Super important. On the, on the, on the um, base of it is you telling people or you telling someone that you can help. And I guess that's the... Bottom, bottom end of it. Yeah. Um, and so, so that might look like you know, um, just, you know, you've gone on your video and you say, hey, listen, I, I help young families uh, mm. live an abundant, healthy life without drugs. I practice here in Port Melbourne. have been doing it for the last 20 years. Come in and see me. Yeah. Or I had a patient with this and they got really good results and now they're doing this. Yes. And, but it's me telling the story that I, I can help. Um, and then that next level is someone else telling people that you can help. A testimonial. Someone uh, sharing their story of a journey with you or um, under your care. Yeah. And that builds more trust. Yeah. So think about it. You know, if in terms of put yourself in that experience, if mm. somebody's saying, hey, yeah, look, I, I, we, we love testimonials. They're a powerful, powerful story. They're a powerful motivator. We can't use them at all here in Australia. Uh, but many of you around the world, sorry, as a chiropractor here in Australia, we can't use them. So it depends on what kind of health practitioner you are, where you're registered. You know, there's something incredibly powerful, which is why we see it in so much of our marketing is some form of testimonial saying, listen, you know, before I came to see Dr. Tony there too, the kids were on and off antibiotics all the time. They're missing days of school. Uh, you know, it seemed like we spent more time at the chemist than we did anywhere else. And since seeing Tony, uh, you know, the kids haven't had a course of antibiotics in six months. They haven't missed a day of school. And, you know, for the first time in, uh, you know, literally, uh, you know, for a long as I can remember, I feel like, you know, uh, the kids are, are operating with a level of health and abundance that they haven't had before. That's a powerful kind of testimonial there too, but they can be great. But luckily for us, there's a level even above that that's even more important. So, you know, the, the first level of I can help you is just saying, hey, I can help. Second level is a testimonial. And the third level is the one that we really want to be focusing on our content is actually helping people. Yeah. And that's where our content actually provides some solutions to these people's problems. Nothing better, nothing builds more trust than actually helping people. So it might be that video that says, here's my three favorite stretches uh, that every athlete should do to uh, prevent injury. You get someone doing something. And again, we, we talk about this a lot, you know, going from, from sad Johnny to happy Johnny. Get them moving in the direction that's getting them to be a healthier, happier version of themselves. And you can provide that through your content. Get them yeah. doing something that actually helps them. So for most of us, and certainly, you know, so Tony and I as chiropractors, you know, about the only thing that we can't deliver through a video is an adjustment. Mm. But, you know, I'm, and if you're not giving your audience good quality lifestyle advice, then you're missing out. And now that lifestyle advice could be just a paradigm for them to kind of view health in a different way. So you need to be kind of sharing cool and helpful content. You know, when I give, we stick with that example of raising a drug-free family, then, you know, raising a drug-free family, uh, shock horror, ain't just about getting adjusted if you're a chiropractor. They need to change the way they look at the body signals that come on. I think they need to change the way that they eat. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to be the delivery source of that. You could give them some books to read. You could shake them to some, you know, there's so many great documentaries on mm. Netflix nowadays. Too, you want to talk about stress management, all those kind of things there too. So when I'm watching your videos, Dr. Tony's videos, he's sharing these great helpful pieces of content. Uh, not only is that helping me as I'm starting to take action with those, he, I feel like he understands me, it builds trust. But we've also got to realize this because this is something that's changed enormously over just the last 20 years. 20 years ago, for me to build a relationship with somebody strong enough that I felt comfortable in making a buying decision, whether that be putting a new kitchen in my house, whether it be buying a new car, whether it be choosing a health professional, it took five touch points. Now, nowadays, though, that's up. Well, last I heard is around that 20 touch points. So I need to uh, read some of Tony's posts. I want to uh, watch some of Tony's videos. Now, if you get yourself all set up with this, those 20 touch points can happen very quickly because I see Tony's video on Facebook. I went, oh, this is kind of cool. I follow him over on Instagram, maybe on his YouTube. Oh, Tony's got a podcast as links, well. Links back to the website. It's you know, I can get those touch points mm -hmm. happening immediately. And I also think this, when you're using video, I think you can even accelerate that much more quickly past that whole, uh, uh, you know, 
trust point there mm. as well, which really kind of brings us back to because you, you had an interesting experience yesterday. Let's I, let's get into Tony's private I, life while we're on I, here as well. I did, folks. Uh, got a I uh, went on a date yesterday, and I, I need just, to see where we got somebody that there should be kind of fireworks and stuff <laughs> that go up through here as well. Woo, woo. Look out! And so I guess it, you know, in the modern day of dating, you know, there's some some online things that can happen to kind of match you up. Rhymes with Rinda. <laughs> <laughs> Belinda, her name wasn't Belinda, but um, so which was all on visual and 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 photos, you know, and we get a, an idea of what someone can look like. Then there's some messages back and forth, and you kind of get an idea of what they're about and all those sort of things as much as you can through through messages. But look, I was saying to Angus before, you know, I, I basically gave up two hours. Not gave up, that's right. I dedicated two hours of my day to drive somewhere to a park, go for a walk with this uh, this lady to see if we were a match. Well, it took, I think, three seconds to know that this wasn't the match for me. This wasn't someone that I was going to move forward, uh, you know, in this analogy, in the buying decision, on the buying decision of a partner. Mm. And uh, it, it really got me thinking that if we had have maybe just shared a 90 second video to each other before we actually went on the date, that could have saved us probably an hour and 58 minutes. Yeah. You know, so I, I, you just reminded me the power of video to, to put across who you are and what you're about and what makes you tick. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the things that a lot of practitioners miss out is that, that why video. That video that where you share why you became a mm. chiropractor or a naturopath, whatever it is, mm. to get that passion across. But you can put that across in every single piece of content mm. that you that you do. And hopefully, through our content, you can pick up on our enthusiasm for what we're doing here at Adio Media. So it was just a nice little reminder that mm. um, you know no time is wasted, but video is very, very powerful. It is a good point because we can get stuck on only ever making how-to videos, which mm. are helping people. And we like to think about that 80% of your videos are about them and 20% of your videos are about you. And we just did an example of it just then that we've spent time, in fact, inside of this, uh, you know, whether it be podcast you listen to or watching us live, is that we've shared some content that we think that will help you and make your life better. And at the same time, too, Tony just shared a little bit about him. So you get to a great way to build trust is to get to better know Tony, get to better know me. And so some of your videos need to be about you. You know, why did you choose to become a chiropractor, a dentist, or whatever your, your profession is? You know, what are your struggles? We want to know that. In fact, we want to often it as a tendency for us to make out like our lives is perfect. But if you're pushing yourself out there as perfect, I can tell you become unrelatable. Mm. You know, I don't want to work with somebody that's unrelatable. I want somebody to, you know, if I'm going to know, like, and trust somebody, th- there need to be some similarities, something that I can mm. kind of... Because you need to know whether they understand you. You yes. understand them. Yeah. And if you're unrelatable, they, the perception is that you don't understand them. Yeah. So, gang, a little last wind-up about that too. We said any piece of content that you're putting out that needs to answer three questions, whether it be a newsletter, whether it be a simple post on Instagram, Facebook, whether it be a video that you're making, those three questions. And I think these could probably even go in an order as well. The first question that your content must address is, do I trust you? And we've got a bit of a live photo happening here all at the same time there. So once we've addressed that, do I trust you? And as Tony just mentioned before, one of the fastest ways for you to build trust is with video, this medium where you get to see somebody in uh, their natural habitat, their personality too. Question number two is, do you understand me? Best way for us to go about having our audience feel understood is to communicate in their language for you to address their fears and frustrations. And the third and final question is, can you help me? Best way for you to help people is for you to be starting to share your very best stuff, delivering content that actually makes a difference to their life as well. That's it, Beautiful. Gang. Any final thoughts on that? Uh, any dating applications? At our media.com forward slash date Tony. Um, <laughs> no, nah, just joking. Um, look, love what you do, guys. Keep it up and get your message out there because, uh, as we say, if you're not going to take it up, the guy down the road will. And good luck to them. Great, gang. As always, thanks for all that you continue to do. Keep saving lives. And Tony and I look forward to seeing you back here next week as well on the Marketing Your Practice show. Over and out. See you, gang. See you.